Holly was born on Tuesday the 18th of March. I don't think either of us were very surprised that we were having a girl. I'd bought a few girl clothes along the way, but I bought boy clothes as well. But he just thought I knew it was a girl, but we didn't. Um, just had a feeling maybe. Given the fact that I've been diabetic for nearly 21 years now, I guess to me, having injections or changing my pump line is like brushing my teeth. I've never seen diabetes as a negative aspect of my life. It's part of who I am. When I was 17, I left the children's hospital and started seeing my new endocrinologist. And at my first appointment, I went with mum and dad and we sat through and went through all the normal procedures and questions and then after about half an hour she kicked them out of the room and said, now, are you planning on having babies soon? And I said, oh God, no, not for a long time, but it was that very first appointment with her that she brought up the issue that is something for me to be aware of and that pregnancy and diabetes does take a lot of planning, is a long-term thing to think about. I've been studying architecture at Melbourne Uni for six years now. Working on these design projects, by the end of it, it just completely consumes you. It's rewarding to see all these little bits and pieces come together to become your building. I think that I definitely will have children in the future and the career path that I'm following is probably one that would be quite supportive of children while understanding the process that you have to go through and that being diabetic means you can still have perfectly healthy children but it's important to know the other impacts that it's going to have on your life and the processes that you have to go through in order to get your body ready to have a baby. I planned really early about wanting to have a family. So my husband and I spoke about it long before we were married. And when he was still my boyfriend, he came with me to the Having a Healthy Baby seminar. So we learnt more about it. My endocrinologist spoke to me about how important it was to have tight control of your diabetes for a substantial amount of time before you became pregnant and also throughout your whole pregnancy. When I gave her the go ahead that we wanted to start planning for a family, she tightened the reins on my control and we worked together to try and get much better control. It wasn't really like hard work, it was just rewarding when I saw the blood sugars getting better and better. I really like eating healthy and every night we cook in a very healthy way. I think it's really nice to be able to grow some of your own produce in the backyard. You just step outside and pick any veggies you have or grab the eggs. There was a lot of testing involved. Um, that, and that's really the only way that, that I felt that I could guarantee ensuring that my blood sugar levels were as, as good and as tight as they could be. And it's very intense time as well, I think, and you have a lot of expectations. Once they were under control, it was like the doctor said, OK, go for it, go have a baby. And we're like, yes, <laughs> it was very exciting. <laughs> for a woman with type 1 diabetes, it's a really, really good idea to plan the pregnancy. I'd really like to see them at least six months beforehand, um, maybe even 12 months, so that we can organise to improve control, check complications, all of the things that are required to have a really healthy pregnancy. Wow, 14 weeks, that's fantastic. Yeah. You're starting to feel a bit better. I am. I Getting that. the right sort of contraceptive advice is right. critical. The lady can go to general practitioner or endocrinologist, obstetrician, or if she's not comfortable with that, she can go to one of the family planning associations. Maybe after breakfast, though. How have your blood glucose levels been, Amber? Yeah, they've been pretty good. 
Um, for a woman who's planning a pregnancy, we're aiming for really tight control. After eating. But in the first instance, we aim for an HbA1c of less than 7%, but ideally, if it can be managed, we would like an HbA1c of less than 6%, which is a really tough target. That's yeah. fantastic, that's really terrific control and great monitoring. And your last HbA1c, um, 5.3%. Great, that's really Which good. is amazing. Women who have excellent blood glucose control at the start of their pregnancy and throughout the pregnancy are much more likely to minimise any of the, the adverse outcomes that can be associated with diabetes. By that I mean miscarriage rates can be increased, birth de defects can be increased, there's a risk of big babies. My basal rates down a little bit. And no problems with hypos? Um, a few going down to two, but still feeling it and being able to come out of it fairly quickly. I think the first trimester of pregnancy is really the trickiest time of all. And I guess mainly because of the problems with hypoglycemia. So intensive monitoring is really important and a recognition that hypos might not be the same as they were before or they might even occur with very little or no warning. Every woman who becomes pregnant requires folic acid. It minimises the risk of spinal cord abnormalities such as spina bifida and also problems with the central nervous system. For women who have diabetes, the dose needs to be increased. We recommend five milligrams of folate to be taken at the time the woman stops contraception and to be taken right through the first trimester of pregnancy. The most important thing if a woman falls pregnant unexpectedly is don't worry and don't panic. But it is important to go along and see your endocrinologist as soon as possible and probably also to organise an early appointment with an obstetrician. Finding out I was pregnant was, you know, was, was really exciting um, and scary at the same time. The hypos were pretty full on during the, uh, my first trimester and my symptoms really changed as well. I um, continued to uh, manage my diabetes really well and maintained a really good HbA1c that I was happy with. When you first become diabetic you learn how to count carbs and naturally you become a little more relaxed with it over the years but when you're pregnant and you have such a fine zone that your blood sugars need to be in I think it becomes much more important it just takes the guessing game out of trying to control your blood sugars. Carbohydrate counting um, involves going back to basics, so really having a look at what a food is made up of, um, what are the carbohydrates, um, and then breaking them down into serve sizes. And we match the amount of carbohydrates that they have at each meal to the number of units of insulin that they have. My endocrinologist gave me a tip before I became pregnant, and she suggested that after meals I go for a walk straight away. One of the main struggles for me is trying to keep my blood sugars in the zone after meals. It really only feels really real when I'm having the ultrasound and I can see the baby on the on the screen. That's really amazing. I'm getting used to the idea and I'm thinking about what it'll be like, but because I can't feel the baby move just yet, I think that might really hit home when I can feel the baby move. Mm -hmm.